Today's episode is unlike all other episodes on this YouTube channel. We have with us Mr. Gary Gong, Senior Manager, Product Management, walking us through the latest functionality of CRM Analytics. This video is packed with live demo, some amazing conversations, a fun lightning round. So do stick around. Hey Gary, I am so excited to have you on my YouTube channel. I know we have met before, we have spoken before, but for the audience, do you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, I'm really happy to be here. My name is Gary Gong and I'm a product manager working on the data prep team in CRM analytics. Um, a fun fact is that I was one of the first engineers working on this data prep project. So like I said, I'm really happy to be here with you. That is amazing. And I know we have an exciting demo lined up, uh, some new product features that, that the audience is going to see today. Can you tell us a little bit about the demo? The yeah, features? so I'm going yeah. to be, I'm going to be showing multi-value functionality in recipes. Mm -hmm. This is something that we added in a recent release. We had mm -hmm. four, five new functions for operating on multi-values. So I'm, I'm super really excited. Like, do you want to go right into the demo, show us all the features? And as we, as we do the demo, I'm sure we'll have a lot of questions. Yeah, of course. So right. let me share my screen. If you don't know what a multi-value is in a recipe, let me first explain to you like, you can a multi-value is a single cell in a data set that holds multiple values and you make it into this search situation when you have like a multi-select pick list right from mm -hmm. salesforce or possibly when you create a join and then you select the lookup multiple values option so those are some cases when you might get a single cell with multiple values in it got it <laughs> so for someone who is who does not know salesforce for someone who has never looked at crm analytics what is the screen that we are looking at Ah, I saw yes. a few nodes and customers and transform. What is it that we're looking at? So in CRM analytics, the first step when you do anything in CRM analytics is to bring in data, right? Mm -hmm. So being able to connect to data, bring in that data either from a Salesforce org or from external sources, mm -hmm. and then to prep that data. So by prepping the data, I mean to cleanse it, to maybe transform it, append it, join it to other data sources. And you do and you use that, and you do that using a recipe, which mm -hmm. you see here. And this is the recipe builder. It has a visual canvas that visualizes your data pipeline. So each node represents an operation in the data pipeline. Like for mm -hmm. example, this customer is, is an input node that reads in data from the customer data set. There mm -hmm. are transform nodes, aggregate nodes. And finally, there is an output node that you can use to write out that data into mm -hmm. either a Salesforce org or external data sources. Got it. And I love the feature where you clicked on the customers and I immediately got to see the data i got the preview of the data i know a lot of programming languages you you may have to write head where it shows <laughs> you know the first five rows so this is this is done with clicks right where i can quickly see what columns are uh and get a quick what, what does how many rows does it show like 200 rows or something uh yeah so it's it shows a, the first 2000 rows by default okay based on the natural okay. ordering of the data source but you're right you can click on any node in the canvas to see the preview of those transforms at that point. That is awesome. That is amazing. All right. Sorry for interjecting. You can you can continue with the use case. No problem. So I was going to talk about multi-values. Like mm -hmm. I said before, in a recent release, we added five new multi-value functions. So first is split, where it takes in as input a field from your recipe. Okay. And then a delimiter. And then mm -hmm. it splits that string and creates a multi-value cell for you. Okay. Secondly, there is a rate join, which takes in mm -hmm. a multi-value field and a delimiter. And then it converts that multi-value into a string. OK. <laughs> Third, there is array it contains, which takes in a multi-value field and returns true if this literal will exist in that multi-value. OK. Size takes in a multi-value field and returns the number of elements. OK. And then lastly, it takes in, array takes in a list of fields and then returns a multi-value concatenating each of those field values into a single multi-value cell. So those Got are the it. five okay. new functions available to you. So mm -hmm. I was going to walk you through a, a scenario where those functions might come in useful when processing some of your data. All right, let's take a look. All right, so first let's familiarize ourselves with the customer data we have here. Mm -hmm. So this customer data set has some usual information that you might have, like a customer name, um, how old that customer was, but it also has these columns here, home phone number, mobile phone number, and work phone number for each of the customers. And not every customer has a home phone number. Not every customer has a mobile phone number. Not every customer right. has a phone number. 
<coughs> and it also has call preferences for when that mm. customer prefers to be called. <coughs> and you could imagine this maybe coming in from a multi-select pick list, right? From a right. And this is the array split function that you were talking about, where I have multiple values in one cell. I have evening, night, afternoon, evening, night in one cell. Right. So let's look at, so in the transform node here, I created a transform step that splits call mm -hmm. preferences on the mm -hmm. <laughs> on the space column. So the result is a multi-value column. Mm -hmm. In this case, you can see the multi-value data type designated here using a the brackets. I can switch to columns here to confirm mm -hmm. that we have created a multi-value column here. Got it. Okay. And then the preview shows the values separated by commas. Mm. <laughs> to to um so the second step here is to drop the call preferences column to reduce or to to avoid confusion got it so one question is how do i get to the formula piece i know few people have not never seen uh recipes before so how, uh, yes. how do i even yeah so to get the formula you add a new transform node okay and then in the toolbar here, there is this FX icon that you can click mm. to add a custom formula step. OK. Your recipe. And then from there, you can type in a custom formula here. OK. And then it's also a point and click, right? So I can actually go and select the, select the function within the columns. I can select the columns, and it will actually write out the formula for us. Isn't that true? Ah, yeah. Yes, yes, of course. So then if you okay. wanted to do something like, I don't know, let's see, home phone. Mm -hmm. Or if I wanted lower, let's see, character length. So I, mm -hmm. as I type in a, as I start typing in, I see auto or suggestions for what, what field or functions I may want to use. Got so it. in okay. this case, I want to do character length. Mm -hmm. And then here it will has a, it fills out the function signature for me for what what arc, arguments it expects. Mm -hmm. And then here I can switch to the columns tab and then click insert to Got it. Okay. the field that I want. So in this case, I am getting the length of the home phone value. That is amazing. And then you can and select the output. And it returns a number. Mm -hmm. And in this case, most of them should have, yes, 12 characters in them. And then in some cases, some of them don't have home phone numbers. Right, so right. Know. Awesome. All right, so then <laughs> what I'm going to do next in this transform node is to create another formula Mm -hmm. where using the array contains capability oh. where checking if the when to call value contains a certain value so in this case <laughs> this is checking for if if the cell contains the morning value then we're mm. going to create a column that produces one otherwise we're going to create a cell that produces zero so in that case you can see here there's a new morning right. column here for if if the multi value contained morning, then it would have one. If it mm -hmm. if it contained if it didn't contain morning, then it would have zero. <laughs> Similarly, we're going to create formulas for afternoon, evening, mm -hmm. and night. Okay. So at the end of this, you should have four new columns with ones or zeros. Basically a Boolean value, right? Zero, mm -hmm. zero if it doesn't contain that value, and one if it does. And then finally, in the aggregate node. We are going to calculate aggregates for those values. So now Got we it. are totaling the number of, <coughs> of users who prefer to be called in the morning and totaling the number of users who prefer to be called in the afternoon. And additionally, you can even use the aggregate node to split out the, the total based on age, for example, right? So now that we can huh. see people who are 30, how many of them prefer to be called in the morning? How many prefer to be called in the afternoon? So you can do some basic analytics already. Like based That's on really these cool. multi-value functions. Huh. Okay. All right. So then another use case that I thought of was if I split off this, if I branch off of this transform node here, mm -hmm. we are using the array function here. So array creates a new multi-value mm -hmm. based on these columns here. So we're creating a new value for home, mobile, and work phone numbers. And then we're joining them back together um, with the <coughs> with the comma with the mm. uh, comma as a separator. Okay. So in, in this example, <coughs> array join 
we're using the capability of array join to remove empty values from the, mm. the multi value. So the result here is that you have a multi a string here, but with mm -hmm. no but with no empty spaces, right? So if somebody right. is missing a home phone number, it's not going to show up in this comma separated list. And if no if somebody doesn't have a mobile phone number, it's not going to show up in this comma separated list. So so, this, so as part of your data set, you had three columns: home phone, mobile phone, work phone. And yes. just with these two lines of code, you you concatenated these three columns. But yes. as part of the concatenation, wherever there were null values, you could just eliminate that. Yes. So, so if in this case, three values. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say in this case, this person is missing a mobile phone number, and then the result is a comma separate list with just the home and work phone numbers. That is very cool. Yeah. All right, and then we're using the split functionality here in the second step mm -hmm. to get the first. The first item in that list. Okay. Which becomes then, a primary phone number? Yes. And then this this will become the, the first phone number that they prefer to be contacted at. Hmm. Okay. In some cases, some people don't have home phone numbers. In this case, we'll fall back to using the work phone number. And in some cases, okay. they don't have a work phone number, we'll fall back to using their, their mobile phone number. Got it. So just this make sure that everyone this <coughs> we're basically finding out their preferred phone number to be called at. Hmm. And then this formula step is saying if they don't have any preferences, then they're they're missing a call preference. Okay. But then we're doing a very similar thing here where we're joining the call preferences, eliminating any empty values there. And then we're doing something similar where we're getting the first value of the call preferences. Call preferences. Using, okay. using split. And in the end, the result is that we have a primary phone number at which everyone mm -hmm. would should be called, should be contacted. And then the primary time for when they would be called. So now it's really easy to see what phone number they should be called at and at what time they should be called at. And we right. accomplish this using these uh, multi-value functions like array join and array and split. This is fantastic. And I, I also see there's a drop columns. So as part of the process, we you created additional columns, but it also allows you to clean that data set, right? Uh, yes. Any additional columns, you could just say, I don't need this as part of a final data set. So you just select it and you could drop it. Yes. So we and again, that's part, all, all done using clicks. Yes, of course. So as, as part of creating these formulas, I created new columns and then mm -hmm. use the drop columns transform to remove columns that are that won't be used in the final data set. All right. And if I want to add, so let's say there were five columns that were dropped. If I want to you know, add one of the columns that will drop. Do I just click on the pencil icon and yes, make edits click, to that formula? Yes, you can click on the pencil icon and then select a column to undrop. So if I wanted to bring back their home phone numbers or mobile phone numbers, work phone numbers, mm -hmm. now they're now they're back into into the recipe. That is amazing and so easy. Yeah, yeah. So th that's what I had to show for you today. The the new multi value column or the new multi-value functions that are available and how you might want to use them. That is amazing. I, I really love this this new functionality, especially because you know you it's 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 firstly it's very easy to build. It's completely built using clicks. Uh, and it allows you to concatenate, it allows you to remove any delimiters. Uh, you know, and I mean this this the, the, the whole transformation piece had so many steps in it and again completely done using clicks you know you're splitting adding delimiters uh, ignoring null values which is a huge thing when you're when you're cleaning data you know you're never going to have clean data there's there's always going to be missing values and null values and it handles all those conditions which is absolutely amazing yeah i hope it comes in useful for all of you when you use it uh, yes <laughs> so uh, i've seen this i'm excited how does anyone learn more about it are there videos on this are there blogs on it Oh my gosh, let me see. So the first step is to go to help and then mm -hmm. go to data. Rehab. This will bring you to the official help docs for data. Okay. Mm -hmm. There is also blogs posted to salesforceblogger.com mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. can view. Mm -hmm. There are some of them already talk about the multi-value functions and use cases when you might want to use it. And then of mm -hmm. course, there's this channel, right? You can come to this yes. channel to view. <laughs> Absolutely. And for someone who, again, you know, is new to CRM analytics, new to Salesforce, is there a way for someone to spin up a trailhead org very easily? Oh yeah, that's it's really easy. You can go to trailhead and then mm -hmm. there you can sign up for an org where you have analytics and CRMA already enabled for you. So All right. 
Fantastic. So what I'm going to do, Gary, is I'm going to get a list of all the links, the Salesforce blogger, the help articles, as well as the 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 link to spin up the Trailhead org, and I'm going to put that as part of the description so that the audience gets access to help articles, and you know they'll spin up demo orgs and start playing with this functionality. Awesome. All right. So before we go, uh, we have some fun questions for you. Uh, this was absolutely amazing, but we we want to make sure that uh, the audience has fun. They get to know Gary a bit more. Uh, so are you ready for the lightning round? Yes, I am. All right, let's go. So it's going to be a series of five questions. Let's make it fun. It's go. It has to be rapid. Uh, so all right. So the first question is, Gary, do you prefer texting or talking? Oh my gosh, I prefer texting. Texting. All yes. right. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I think I've, I I used to prefer talking, but I'm preferring texting as well now. Yeah. All right. The next question is. Do you like the mountains or the beaches? I love the mountains. I you grew up in the, mountain. the mountains. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> All right. The third third question. What is your last Google search? Oh my gosh! I'm embarrassed <laughs> to say that my last Google search was for a car because I'm in the market to buy a new car, and I'm horrified by how tight the car market car market is. Right yes. Now. All right. The fourth question. The question that everybody has is. Work from home or work from office? Oh, that's a controversial one. <laughs> I prefer to work from home. I was I will yeah. be in the work from home camp. All right. Uh, final question is: What's the best advice you have received? Oh my gosh, the best advice that I've received. That is a tough one. I will say that. Can I switch the question around to say what is the best advice that I gave? Because I recently yes. gave my son some advice saying that the more you practice, the better you'll mm -hmm. get at something. Right? Love it. So things don't come easily. So just the more you do something, the more you do something, the better you'll become. Uh, Gary, this was amazing. Uh, thank you for for having the recipe ready. Thank you for walking through the use cases, uh, telling people how to get access to trailhead orgs and you know, telling people about about recipe and how this all works. Uh, did you have fun? Yeah, of course. And if you have any other questions, feel free to add a comment in this video or find me on Twitter. I'm always around and I'm always happy to help you. Love it. And will we see Gary in more future sessions on this channel? Yes, I will be. Absolutely. Love it. Love it. <laughs> so one thing that I always do as Part of my every video is ask subscribers to, you know, or ask uh, viewers to subscribe to my channel. I don't want to do this this time. Could you do that for me? Oh yeah. So if you, okay, and if you if you like this video and you want to hear more, be sure to click subscribe to get updates on when we add new videos to this channel. Love it, love it. Thank you so much, Gary. This was absolutely amazing. Truly appreciate it. You heard what Gary said. Like this video, share this video, share it on LinkedIn. Also, do check out my Instagram channel. It is rapidly growing. There are over 15,000 followers on my Instagram channel. There's a lot more exciting content planned in the coming days, so stay tuned.